Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Bitcoin update. Bitcoin has broken above 28.6k and it is currently moving upwards in the 30k region. Now this is great news and the reason it is great news is the same reason we've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks now. 28.6k was and still is because it hasn't seen a weekly candle close yet. The major, in fact, one of the most major resistance zones Bitcoin has ever faced in its entire price history, and certainly the strongest resistance it has faced since all the way back here in 2018 at 6K. Bitcoin breaking above this 28.6K level on the weekly chart in five days and 20 hours, if we do so, will be one of the most bullish moves we have seen in four years since 2019. So it's great to see some movement to the upside here. We have not seen the move extend this far to the upside uh, in previous price history. For example, what I mean by that is in the last few weeks, we've had various wicks to the upside, but we have not seen any move, certainly not seen any move extend past 30K or even 29.2K or 29.3K. And we are currently moving upwards here. We reached 30.4K. Beautiful stuff here. Now, look, here's the thing. <clears throat> With a level like 28.6K, with a level like 28.6K that is supported so heavily by the gap in the volume profile, right? With a level like 28.6K that has been supported so heavily with the historical price action in the past, with the wicks to the downside, with various candle closes deviating from 32K to 30.4K, we do need to be seeing a weekly candle close above it. We can't simply rely on a daily candle close above this region to consider it a breakout. I know that this means we might be, uh, for example, if you're looking to buy here, which realistically you shouldn't be doing, right? You should have bought already. And, and this is something we've talked about many, many times. But for example, maybe you're a swing trader, maybe you sold, you bought and you sold. But you know, if you're willing, if you're looking to buy here for any reason, okay, realistically, the smart thing to do would be wait until a weekly candle close above 28.6K. You could also take a strategy, right? And, and I don't necessarily think this is a bad strategy. You could also take a strategy where you buy right now. For example, you buy 75% right now, seeing as we've broken that major level. And then if we close the weekly candle back below 28.6K, okay, you'd have to assume that we wouldn't be closing it too far below it. Then you would sell and take the loss. And if we close it above, then you'd buy the rest 25%. Okay, so... You know, like I said, like I said just then, 25, 75% buy now, close below uh, 28.6K would act as like a stop loss and 25% if we close above it. That could be one thing you do if you haven't bought yet. Uh, another thing you do is just wait until weekly candle close. Another thing you could do is wait until after CPI because CPI is just in, what is it, 24 hours? Yeah, a bit more than that. I don't know. I'll have to adjust for Australian time soon, but it, it's, it's tomorrow, okay? So CPI is very, very soon. Uh, and, and what this means is that this move could be knocked back down by CPI. You know, we have a very, very optimistic CPI target here. We have a target, the market consensus is 5.2% CPI. CPI came in last month at 6%. So that's a 0.8% decrease the markets are expecting there on, on CPI. That's a big decrease. You know, we might not see that. And we do we do really have to consider that we, we could de definitely not see that. You know, I, I'm not one to debate the market's consensus, not at all, because I, I don't have, you know, I'm not gonna act like I'm smarter than the market. But what I'm saying is that we could very well see CPI come in higher. And if we do see it come in higher, then we could get knocked back down here. We could go back down below 28.6K. There's no doubt about that. That could certainly happen. But I do want to point out, okay, that this move to the upside is not entirely unexpected. My, my stance on Bitcoin <clears throat> over the last month since we started entering this region, since we got above 26.6K, has basically been, I don't know. Okay, and, and you guys have probably seen that reflected in all my videos. I've said, I don't know. And the reason I said, I don't know, and you might say, oh, that's a bit of a, you know, that's a bit of a cop out, you know, just saying, I don't know. The reason I said, I don't know is because I didn't see it as bearish enough for us, for me to be certain it's going down. <clears throat> and I didn't see it as bullish enough for me to be certain it's going up. But I did point out very, very clearly, okay, that there were very strong similarities. In fact, the last video I did, the video I did literally two days ago, I pointed out there's very strong similarities between this price region where we're at right now in this re in this uh, yellow circle, this yellow square, sorry, right? With the three doji candle closes and then a bullish candle and exactly what we saw in 2019 around the same time. Three similar kind of doji candles almost and then another bullish move. I did point that out. If we do see a weekly candle close on Bitcoin above 28.6K, I would hence expect Bitcoin to follow the pattern we saw in 2019 and move upwards even further in a very bullish upside move. Now, you might be thinking, oh, you can't just say that because of three candles. I'm not saying because of three candles. I'm saying it also because 
what we're seeing is the same horizontal bull market foundation support zone that were broken above, just like in 2018, around the same time we saw those three candles. I'm also saying, I'm also saying, and let me find the chart here, that this is all happening at the same time on the monthly chart as well. What we see is a very clear trend on the monthly chart, a cyclical trend on the monthly chart, right? Where we have a red support line, okay, formed during the bull market. We drop below the, the blue line here, the 21 EMA. We bottom out on the yellow line. We saw that occur on three separate occasions. Right now, just like the time period in 28, 2019, I just compared it to, we are seeing a break above 21 EMA. Okay, the blue line there. So this is all happening perfectly, right, from a fractal perspective. And so if we do see the close above 28.6K, I would hence make the prediction that Bitcoin will be seeing another you know, big chunk of move to the upside, just like in 2018. Now, where could that move take us? That is a, a question that there's, you know, it, it's not very easy to answer because market conditions are very different to 2019. We haven't seen the same percentage gain on the way up to this moment. And we likely won't see the same percentage gain on the, on the way up after this moment, right? If this does uh, confirm to be a fractal at 28.6K candle close. Okay, so what would I expect to happen? I would expect if Bitcoin does close above 28.6K, we would keep going upwards until probably around that 37 to 38 k region, maybe even 36. Why do I say that? I'm saying that because that is basically the nearest strong, uh, the nearest major resistance zone. And I, I'd probably expect, again, if Bitcoin closes above 28.6K on the weekly candle, that we see something like 2019, where we continue upwards for a second half of this move and then see a few months, if not more, probably, you know, five months, you know, big uh, it's hard to say exactly what the dates are. Again, the data is speculative. I'm basing this off just one cycle, and I'm also basing it off a time where we had the COVID crash as well. But the point is, if we're following the same structure, we could see another move to the upside to 38-ish, and then consolidation for a very long period of time, potentially even to the next to the end of the year. And then after that point, we'll start heading upwards again around the halving, and then see the bull market. That's what we would expect if we were. Well, that, that would be our best guess, at least, right? It's hard to say it's what we expect based on one data point, 2019. But that would be our best guess. And, you know, right now, it is worth noting, we are moving very fast. And, you know, we're moving faster than the market expects, I think. Um, you know, breaking above 28.6K here isn't all bad. Okay, if we're looking at, as I said, and you guys should be familiar with this by now, each cycle, we have a horizontal bull market support zone that turns into a bear market resistance zone. Each red line is indicative of each cycle's horizontal bull market support zone and bear market resistance zone. Uh, every single time we break down, well, well, not every single time, but when we break down below that line, the period of time between the breakdown and the breakup has historically been 420 days and 189 days. I've taken the average between those two numbers and I've placed it into the chart here. And as you can see, the average between those two numbers is 308 days. And that basically means that somewhere around 308 days from the break down below 28.6k we should get back above it and that just happens to be this week so it's kind of perfect timing to get back above it so it's not like we're moving too fast or anything at this point in time um but i i i just want people to know that at some point we will be slowing down we're not in a bull market yet okay it's very important to remember that we're not in a bull market yet this is not a bull market yet let me bring up my four-year cycle chart if i actually have it up there we do Okay, so we're, we're in the, the first year after the bear market. And generally what this year is, is it's moved to the upside and then consolidation. And then next year, 2024, will be starting to kind of slant upwards quite nicely and 2025 will be the bull market. This isn't a bull market yet. And you can't claim it's a bull market because claiming it's a bull market is ignorant of what's happened in the past. We have bottomed out perfectly as per the four-year cycle theory and everything we have done so far has been exactly what the four-year cycle predicts. So to assume that we're gonna break the four-year cycle theory and go into a bull market and see all-time highs this year is ridiculous. What we should see if we're following the four-year cycle theory, which we have every reason to believe we are, what we should see is an all-time high in December next year. December 2024 should be the all-time high. And, and the reason why I say that is because it's generally around 1,100 days between all-time high to all-time high. And, and that's happened on two separate occasions. And we're following the four-year cycle. That's part of the four-year cycle. And that should happen again now. So we shouldn't be seeing the all-time high until late next year. So just keep that in mind uh, before you start thinking that we're going to 10x you know, in the next year or something like that. That's simply not... Uh, what's going to happen uh, as per the four-year cycle. And as I said, we have to trust the four-year cycle. It's the strongest trend we have, and we've got every reason to believe that we're following it perfectly. So total cryptocurrency market cap is also broken to the upside, which is great to see. 
Again, various things have broken the upside. The only thing we need to watch out for really is uh, the S&P 500's at strong resistance here uh, at around that 4,100 region. But at the end of the day, uh, the correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500 has been declining pretty rapidly for like six months now. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned multiple times that the bearish argument is basically dead. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons it's dead. Uh, and that correlation is still kind of downtrending or still lurking below a region. So I don't necessarily think that the S&P 500 going down would drag Bitcoin down that much at all. I think it would definitely hinder Bitcoin's progress to the upside. But who's to say we don't see the S&P go down while Bitcoin's seeing that much needed few month long correction. Okay, you know, this is what I mean. So I think the bearish argument uh, is basically hanging on by an absolute thread here. In five days and 20 hours, if we close above 28.6K, I would be happy, more than happy, to claim the bearish argument is completely dead. At this point in time, bears have five days. That's all it is. You know, the macro is undeniably bullish. You know, we looked at four-year cycle. Uh, we looked at weekly chart. In fact, let's bring it up one more time. Just look at everything that's happened on the weekly chart. Basically, every single major moving average Bitcoin has ever had ever has been broken to the upside on the weekly chart. So, it, it, I mean, including the Gorgian channel. Like that, that, you know, there's not really much else to say other than that. But then if we want to expand it further, we can also say we've seen a bullish monthly RSI cross between the 14 moving average on the RSI and the actual RSI price, as you can see in the screen circle. Every time we have seen that in the past, we have seen gains upwards of 228% in the months that follows, right? What else is there to say? Look at monthly returns, okay? And, and this stuff matters. This stuff is, is, is actually things that matter, okay? Monthly returns, April, look at April, historically for monthly returns, okay? We saw one very red month, 17% in the last bull market, bear market, sorry. We saw three months that were basically even at like 3% losses, 1% losses. And then every other month we've seen was 30% gain, 30% gain, 30% gain, 30% gain, 7% gain, and 50% gain. April is an extremely bullish month historically. And we are only up 5% here in April so far. There is adequate reason to speculate if we get the weekly above 28.6K. Again, everything was relying on that. There is adequate reason to speculate that by the end of April, we very well could be up in this mid to high 30K region. There is, there genuinely is. If we're looking at the data, that is a reasonable assumption to make. You know, April, May, somewhere in that high 30K region. And from that point, I would expect uh, some, some consolidation, some, some uh, correction, in fact, pretty extensive correction. I don't think, and this is a claim that I'm happy to make once again, I think that if Bitcoin closes above 28.6K on the weekly candle, due to the magnitude of that support zone that we would have taken, I do not think Bitcoin would close back below it again this year or potentially, it's hard to say ever, right? Uh, but for, for the foreseeable future. Okay, so again, that just gives you an idea of how strong this zone is right now. So again, guys, CPI is tomorrow. We'll make a video after CPI, potentially even before CPI, see what happens. Uh, CPI is the one thing that could knock us back down here for Bitcoin. I feel like if we get through CPI, we'd be okay. Uh, that's my speculation at this point in time. Again, five days and 20 hours until the weekly candle close. There is a lot of time for the bears to do something and, and drag Bitcoin back down. Nothing is confirmed at this point in time. Uh, and I think I've made everything I want to make clear in this video clear. So that's the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Before we end, I want to check out a few things. Firstly, guys, BitGet Exchange. So this is my favorite exchange. I've used this for over a year for my personal trading. It's got five times the lower fees than Binance. It's got optional KYC. It's released its reserves. It's got a protection fund. So if the exchange does go down or something happens to the exchange, they have, again, they have adequate reserves and also they have a protection fund. So you can make a claim and potentially get reimbursed on your funds. Everything you need in an exchange is on this exchange. I highly recommend getting away from Binance, getting away from Coinbase uh, for various reasons that I'm not going to mention. Uh, but look, Five times lower fees in Binance. If you sign up using my referral link, you'll get a 15% discount on trading fees on top of that. So there's really no reason not to sign up there. And you're also helping out the channel and helping out yourself. So go ahead and do that. And then we've got the Crypto Academy courses, guys. Become a trader, 10 unit course. Uh, basically teaching people how to trade through 10 units. Uh, and you can go to the website. I'll leave it in the description and you can check out everything that this course kind of uh, is about everything it entails, all the unit names, what's in the units, right? Worksheets, uh, videos, slides, trading diaries, all the exact numbers there. And if you if you actually throw us an email here at cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com, we'll send you back a full information pamphlet with a video walkthrough of what the course looks like so you can make an educated decision. Uh, we also have the VIP sale at this point, guys. 25% discount on VIP memberships until the 14th of April. Three days left to get on top of that. If you're interested in altcoins, interested in trading altcoins on Telegram, that's the place to do it. 
Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you tomorrow in the next one.